right. I have um, started the webinar, so everything will be recorded from this point forward. Mm -hmm. we'll wait it will be available ahead. on uh, Friday evening is when they do the downloads, I believe. I'll be right back. I'm going to get my notebook. Okay. Uh, Britt is joining, so we'll have a quorum at least. Hey, Britt. Um, Ellen's not coming, so just Shoshana and Julian. Now wait two minutes. That's awesome. Okay. Well, should we start, I guess? Sure. Sounds good. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, I knew Julian was going to come. I haven't heard from Shoshana, but um, first item of business is um, does someone else, let's uh, promote someone else who can um, check the panelists then, and I'll then share my screen. Sarah, do you want to do that? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Can I promote you? I can get that. Okay. Okay. Great. So if you click on the participants, then you can see as people come in as attendees. And I'll shut that off. Yeah, I, I've got it, Henry. Good. All right. And uh, while waiting, I'll share a photo that some of you may have seen on Facebook, but where is it? Hold on, I'm gonna have to find it. Okay. You guys see that? Yes. 
So I was uh, walking down the street from the apartment I rented in Buenos Aires, and these two women were putting these stakes and plastic wrapping around the base of the tree to protect it. So I thanked them for that. And then we got into a conversation of, about tree care. And uh, they said the tree had practically doubled in height since it was planted a year ago. Um, and I happened to have a picture of, we had just planted the day I left. Right? I drove from our last planting to the airport. So I had a picture and showed them a picture of us planting the tree and on uh, McClellan Drive and uh, McClellan Street, whatever it is. And it was like this great five minute conversation we had. And uh, they plant a lot of tons of street trees in Buenos Aires. It's one of the nice things about being there. And um, they keep planting more. And just like here, trees get damaged, dogs poop on them, cars crash into them, they get broken by people. But it's nice to see the neighbors uh, actually going out and taking care of them. So I thought I would share That's that. Really cool. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah. So now I can share the agenda. Okay. And are there any announcements or no public comments, obviously? I'm going to change this view, though. Okay. So I can see all of you better. Uh, Oh, that's the tree herring, wrong one. Where's the other one? Okay, is this what I'm sharing? The agenda? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so no public hearings. Uh, approval, of, huh? approval of the November meetings and the August tree hearing minutes. Um, I sent you all both of those. And I checked, I watched the video, the end of the video, and what I wrote in the tree hearing minutes was what we agreed to. So if we can agree to that, we can approve it and pass it on to Alan to post. So, I reviewed it. Looks good. All in favor of approving the minutes from, uh, I guess it was September, I forget what it was, September something. So August 9th. Yeah. Good. Okay. So that's approved, Alan. I'll send you another copy if you don't have it. Yeah, if you could. Okay. And then um, the minutes from November of November, whatever it was. November 8th. Um, those get approved, okay. everyone like them? Good, thumbs up, yeah. Okay, so that's approved too. And can someone be the secretary today? Bennett? Do you I'm, already, I'm already on it. All right. That's great. Good. Um, so you probably don't need the actual wording because that'll be in the minutes from the other meetings. So. Um, okay. Do volunteer hours. Bennett? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, say six. Okay. Sarah? Three. Brit? I'm trying to think. So it does not include the last meeting, but it does include everything after that meeting until now, including this meeting, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, um, not with the, uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, let's say, let's say 10. That sounds right. Okay. And the planting. Yeah. So that sounds good. Yeah. I'm probably at about eight this month. All right. We'll check the others as they come in. Um, all right. So. November meeting, chair report. I don't have a ton of things to report. Um, one thing I wanted to say was uh, it was great to be keeping an eye on emails while I was in Argentina and seeing how you, you know, I feel like sometimes I feel like I, if I don't organize and encourage people, nothing gets done in the committee, but I was gone and you guys just went ahead with the Mary Maple thing. And uh, it was great. I was really happy to read that and see, especially Britt as a new member taking charge of that. So thank you all for that. And let's see what else. Um, oh, there was an article in the paper that the town of Hadley actually did a tree planting. I think they planted four trees on the West Common, but it was nice to see they were doing something. Um, uh, we got an email from someone who, in response to um, the newsletter that um, Bennett puts out every month, saying Northampton Road is the place to plant trees. 
Oh, that's great. I don't yeah. know. Don't, don't know that anybody's that they're right. <laughs> yeah. So they responded to your request for locations. That's great. And so I, I responded to her and said, it's a difficult place to plant because there's not really spots, but we should be thinking about that and maybe trying to get some trees in the ground. Um, and then there was also a request for trees on Greenwich or Greenwich Road. Did you see that, Alan? Yes. 64 Greenwich Road. So I don't, I think that's a public road and I don't know. It is. Yeah. I, I'll reach out to them, but I'm not sure how we would do that. Yeah, Britt? Yeah, I would also suggest, you know, the mechanism of um, having people have to be proactive about saying where trees should be planted may um, be kind of an equity issue too, right? So like not everybody's going to be tuned into to what the local committees are doing or, or how to even go about asking for trees. And so I think as a committee, we, we might want to think about um, spots around town that, you know, maybe people are not requesting trees, but, but that might be able to benefit from trees as well. Yeah, that's great. Um, we have talked about equity. Unfortunately, a lot of the uh, spots where we would plant for climate justice are rental properties with uh, the owner hasn't wanted to do that, but we can continue to pursue that. And uh, yeah, I think Ben and putting in the newsletter was just an extra way to get people thinking about trees in the town. So, yeah, good. Um, so I'll reach out to the 64 Greenwich Road people and um, we don't really offer trees anymore for planting, but maybe we can work out something or maybe we'll do a planting in that neighborhood at some point. Um, yeah, so again, good job on the Merry Maple and uh, on the agenda, I think is yeah, giving away the yeah, presentation and follow up. So good. All right, that's all for me. I know Julian had a few things to say, but he's not here. Yep, oh, I'm here. Sure. Uh, sorry, I was uh, late because I have a sports practice that ends at 530. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, my only updates are that we got a request um, for the Granite Road, as you saw. Um, my other update Oh, what was I going to say? Um, my other update was that we are, are at least in my opinion, should possibly prioritize plantings in like more diverse middle class neighborhoods, even if we can't always plant in um, in the apartment complexes, which I think we should try to where we can like in front of Colonial Village and on East Hadley Road and whatnot. But I also think that when we're constrained by what the property owners allow or don't allow us to do, we can also go into like Greenwich Road or Glendale and that area, um, as well as some other areas of town like along Bridge Street and whatnot, where there's still like a diverse working class population of people who um, live there. So we would still be touching on that environmental justice aspect. Um, so I guess that would be my only suggestion on that front. And the newsletter looked good. Uh, I saw that. I'm also doing a interview to report on the Mary Maple to, uh, my school's journalism class. Um, so they should get that out to like a school newspaper or information flyer, um, about that. And yeah, that's it. Great. Can you um, either send us the link or post it on our Facebook page when you're? Yep. You can when it, it, yeah, when it gets printed or when it comes out. When it out. gets printed, I will. Yep, it probably will be a few weeks. Great. Right, thank you. Uh, Tree Warden's report. I don't have a lot to report on. We did receive um, 14 sweet gum trees in the uh, I think, I think there were 10 gallon pots um, from Amherst College who donated them. Um, they were trees that they purchased for, um, you know, their ceremony uh, for um, welcoming the new president of Amherst College. So these trees were used as, you know, at a, a stage somewhere or something to help uh, beautify the, um, the area. And they didn't need all of them. So they gave us 14 trees. Uh, 
and we healed them in at Ruxton storage area um, last week, last Friday, I think it was. Um, so we have 14 sweet gums to find homes for. Northampton Road project would be a great place for <laughs> some of those trees probably. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I'm still working on the Tree City USA application. Uh, we're, you know, trying my best to kind of focus on tree, getting caught up on tree work. Um, now that, you know, we're done with most of our other cemetery duties and other things that the tree crew gets um, pulled into, and we're focusing on, currently focusing on uh, crown lifting along roadsides. So as you, as I've said before, town is required to maintain 14 foot road clearance um, over all of our roads. Um, so we are concentrating on areas where we get complaints from bus drivers and uh, plow operators and things like that that say that the road is getting too overgrown to drive down uh, safely without driving into the other lane. So if you see a lot of freshly pruned trees along the roadside, um, we're really just focusing on getting the branches out of the road at this point, so. Um, and I think that's it, really. Um, okay. Um, yeah, great, thank you. Maybe the Northampton Road could be our April planting location. Will the construction be done by then? It will not. So it may need to be a okay. late summer or fall planting. Um, that's a two-year road project. And I don't know at what stage they'll be at it, you know, that time. Um, okay. So we'll wait on that then. All right. Yeah. Okay. We'll see where they go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, Treasurer's Report. Yes. Um, we currently have $14,912.79, and that reflects two deductions in November, uh, 507 to Amherst Nursery and 675 to Sugarloaf Gardens. Um, but I did follow up on the past charges that were listed as payroll, Alan. There was one in July uh, for 302 and another in September, October, early October for 363. And that is a new change. Apparently DPW has been instructed to charge for your time for doing tree committee plantings on the weekends for our second Saturday plantings to this account. And if that's not correct, then you, we need to talk to DPW and then DPW who, billing needs to talk to accounting to get it straightened out. Yeah. So I can, I actually did try to figure out what was going on there and I was told the same thing. So um, <laughs> since the um, money uh, ran out on the, the tree planting funds um, and I started charging my time to um, my division's regular overtime budget, um, which is 7,700 and some odd dollars uh, a year for overtime. Um, the decision was made by somebody that I should not charge my time to regular overtime. Um, I'm, personally, I'm not, I don't like doing this. I'm not fan of taking money out of the tree planting fund for my time then i'm going to try to figure out what we can do to uh change that i don't think it's appropriate use of tree planting funds um but which means i need to find out how to get some more overtime funds you know uh into my budget to cover those costs yeah I mean, that's... Um, the um one of those charges uh was a reimbursement to me. It was $393 reimbursed to me for buying the seedlings. So it was just simpler for me to purchase with a credit card the seedlings from the mastery wardens than it was to go through the whole procurement process. Um, so that was a reimbursement for the 
the 200 seedlings that we purchased uh, for Arbor Day. Okay. Um, and can I just interrupt? Yeah, Henry, go ahead. We don't need to sign off on those. I mean, you know, Sarah and I didn't sign or even know that you were. Yeah, either did I. And that's, yeah, so I don't know the details and all that, but I would like to correct it. So I will work to to correct that. I'm not, I don't want to continue. To continue. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's the exact opposite of what we're trying to do. Instead of getting a line item budget, we're being penalized. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And but to to that point, is there a statement or a paper trail or something that we could keep track of what's going on here and use it as part of our case for needing a line item budget? Like um, if Alan's time for the plantings is going to be charged to our account, then that should be factored into a line item budget for the tree committee so that we have funds for buying trees and paying Alan for that time. You know, like if it's town money, it doesn't matter if it comes from his overtime account or if it comes from the tree account, as long as it's being funded. So we could, there, I think there's a case to be made here. Um, if we can kind of keep a paper trail or, or get someone to, you know, say something on the committee's behalf and use that for the next time they're voting for town yeah. budget. So I do, um, so on the, on the withdrawal side of things, um, everything, every dime that DPW spends, you know, does go into the muni system. So I get, I can actually get, uh, and we can see this spreadsheet um, out of the muni system that shows what money was charged to that account. Can't see what goes into it, so we don't see who adds money to it, who donates money or whatever. Um, but this does show um, what it was spent for. So, um, and I can track that money um, this way, that part of it, at least. Um, and again, I'm, you know, I think this Munis spreadsheet makes a perfect case for, <laughs> You know, tracking and showing people why it's important, you know, that we fund tree planting, uh, the purchasing of those trees, um, and the planting of them. So, okay. One question I had is so, is it possible or how does it work where, like, the gas and the equipment used and that type of stuff, does that also? that won't also get charged to the tree planting fund eventually if those monies run out, will it? No, I mean, you know, I mean, you could say, you know, I get, you know, I, I, my division operates out of the general fund. So we're, we get our money from the general fund. Um, that money is, you know, uh, controlled by, you know, the, the town manager and the, um, finance committee and, and others um, who prioritize where that money is spent. Uh, my fuel budget covers everything the division does. So, you know, being able, trying to break that stuff out is, is difficult. I, I've tried in the past to actually figure out how much money we're spending on, you know, tree care, um, not hanging banners, you know, not, not, mowing cemeteries and doing like that. It's, it's actually difficult to try to break all these costs out of this, the way it's set up. Um, so I don't right. foresee the town charging for something like that out of this all fund. Right. Um, Good. No, I just wanted to make sure. Um, I think that this certainly speaks to why we need a line item budget. And I mean, it's really sort of too bad in the first place that the town doesn't have adequate monies to compensate our staff for the work they do properly. Then it's the same seven thousand dollars in in uh, seven thousand seven hundred dollars in overtime that I've had in my budget for you know close to ten years. Now. So yeah, it hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you guys have more work one year or more snowstorms or whatever, that changes but <laughs> yeah also the snow budget is separate um okay, when, we, when we respond to snow that is separate yeah 
still, it is really a reason we need that extra overtime, that extra overtime in a different budget and why we need more funds for not only our tree planting budget, our overtime, our this, our that, et cetera. So, yeah. Alan, why don't we just get in touch by email? Maybe I can pull together like just a simple kind of PDF document, you know, and like a cover letter and we can just kind of compile our case for the tree committee getting a line item budget and then we'll be more prepared for the next time we ask for something, um, you know, for the, for the next budget. And I can use some of these numbers to kind of pull together or give um, rationale behind the number we're asking for. So if we ask for a certain number for trees, then we can include the amount for your overtime um, and have, you know, however much data to kind of show why we're asking for the amount. Um, so we can just communicate by email and then I can kind of pull together a little PDF package. Sounds good. And we should also include it for Ian and Chris and the other guys if they need to show up. Correct. Yeah, equipment, the whole thing. Um, but we'll just have a you know a comprehensive um, data that we can show why we're asking for what we're asking for. Okay, um, and that's so that's it for the um, the okay, treasure. Okay, well, I, I have two more things about that. One is um, maybe until we get this resolved. I mean, maybe it'll be resolved before our next workday or planting. But we shouldn't use the other two town employees. Yeah, we actually time. haven't. If you've been noticing they haven't been really participating recently. Um, mostly that is because they um, have a life and want to have a Saturday off. So, yeah, okay. um, but we have been, it's basically just been my time. Um, so, and okay. that's, you know, it's um, just to remind you that it's not, you know, nine to noon, um, the, it's, you know, 7 a.m. till like one or, 30, 2 o'clock, where I'm usually getting paid to get everything ready and then break everything down and put everything away. So it's it's yeah. a you know it's a six or seven hour day usually for me. When I do it. Sure. Um, and then so the still it seemed like still we were a lot lower in the bank account than we should be. And I didn't I still haven't really heard how that happened. We were at like. 26,000 maybe and we're down to you know whatever we're down to now so it seems like a lot maybe it's all accounted for but I wasn't convinced of that um we were at 23,000 for quite a while um Julian actually if you have the numbers from when you were treasurer, if you wanted to send those to me, I can do some retroactive digging. Um, since I took back over the deduction, I'm getting every line item deduction for each month to keep track so that we have a little bit more information. Um, and so far it's all been tracking since October. Yeah, I remember my last treasurer's report was it. $26,080.32. Um, so that was my last treasurer's report. I could do some digging to see if I have previous ones before that. I'm not sure if I do or not. Yeah. So that's, where are we at now again? 14,912. So it's $11,000 $11, plus deduction. Which how the tree plantings cost $3,000 each time. So yeah, that's only that, a couple of times though. How many times have we done it? Four times, five times? Not since we started charging ourselves. I don't know. The, yeah, maybe, maybe, it, maybe it adds up. If we charged ourselves three times, that's 9,000. So that so would do it then. So. All right, so that adds up. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, should we move on to presentations and discussions? And Mary Maple, again, thank you all for all the work you did on that. Um, yeah, Julian, by the way, what's your hours for the month? Uh, my hours, I've put in 12 hours this month. Okay. All right. So the follow up um, one is the list of people that want to get wood and then anything else we're going to do 
write or say or do anything else. So, so I, I have the list of people who want wood. Um, and I, so we collected, um, Nate, we collected emails at the event and there were about 40, 45 people um, on that list. So I sent out an email um, saying that pickup information would be forthcoming, but um, asking if they could kind of let us know what size piece of wood they were looking for. So most people are looking for just the small rounds. A couple of people have specific um, larger projects in mind that Alan suggested we could probably accommodate because it sounds like there are some larger rounds and pieces. Um, so I have that information. I think the next step is for us to set a couple of pickup times and then I can communicate to everyone um, whose email I have um, uh, about that. Okay. Um, I have someone to add to the list. I'll send that to you afterwards. Okay. Um, and Bennett, maybe um, if Britt sends you all the email addresses, you can add them to our, our mailing on MailChimp. Yep, that's a great idea. Okay, so you'll send that to Britt. Uh, Britt will send uh, it. To I'll, I'll send it, yes. Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, that's good. All right. Um, so anyone, when should we do the pickup? Are you ready, Alan, to start dispersing? Um, yeah, I mean, as soon as I know who and how much, um, and what we need to do to, um, you know, get the wood ready. Um, I also wanted to cross check our list to see if I had duplicates from the people. So if you could send the list out of, uh, who has requested wood, I will just make sure we're not, um, both contacting people. <laughs> Okay, um, so maybe it makes sense then for me to put, I, I, I've i been behind this past week, but to put everything into a spreadsheet then um, with name, email, and then the request. Um, and then I can share that with both um, Bennett and with you, Alan, um, to check, um, to, to add the email and then to kind of check um, to make sure we're not duplicating efforts, okay. um, duplicating requests. Yeah. Um, and more on the uh, Mary Maple um, Wood, the uh, 250th committee has requested to, for us to investigate or for me to investigate. Um, there was a commitment made by the committee to place uh, several park benches around town, uh, Kennedy Park and such um, with the 250th um, kind of logo on it to commemorate the town's 250th anniversary. So we met last week, looked at the, the wood that we have available and decided that um, we have a couple of options to do kind of non-traditional benches that might be interesting for people to sit on and appreciate and to, to you know, make a note somehow on the benches that they were made from the Mary Maple and have them placed around town. So that's what I'm going to work on in the next couple of weeks is finding somebody who can work with this wood and possibly has some ideas on how we can make some um, nice uh, benches out of it. I'm not talking about you know ripping it into two by fours. We're talking about using larger pieces of the wood uh, as uh, you know bench or sitting areas. That's great. If anybody has seen anything they like, please feel sh free to share those kind of ideas and images with me. Um, okay. That's good. Um, yeah. So back to the Mary Maple in general, does anyone want to um, say anything about how the, how the memorial went and um, the new Mary Maple lighting? Since I wasn't at either. It was nice. Shoshana, is that you? Yeah. I didn't know you're here. Okay. Um, yeah, I couldn't come in through the. I never got like a email with a thing, yeah. so I can't do the link on Facebook. Okay. Good. I heard it was a bigger turnout than they've had in years past. They actually, had a pretty sizable turnout. 
uh, yeah. for the event. It was, it was huge. There was tons of people there. I went, and there had to be, oh, at least probably a thousand people there. It was pretty amazing. Well, a lot of people taking pictures on the stump, I think I heard. So. Yes, yeah. it's true. <laughs> I did, um, before we move on from the Mary Maple, I did prepare a, um, you know, a presentation on uh, what I discovered during the um, removal process and afterwards. Um, if the committee wanted me to share that now, I could do that um, at this time. I feel like right. that would be, and I would love to hear that. Yeah, so okay. nice. So let me, um, I practiced this a little earlier. Let's see if I can do it right. Um, Shoshana, can you give me your hours while we're waiting for that? Um, probably four. Okay. Can everybody see? Yes. The text on the screen. All right. Um, so, Linden Tree Care did do the removal of the Mary Maple. Um, they had their uh, crane, a log loader, and a bucket truck there. Um, and the town crew was also there with our chip truck and, bu and buck bucket truck um, in case it was needed. Um, took roughly eight hours, uh, which was longer than I had expected. Um, the uh, linen tree care um, bucket operator would, you know, they'd extend the crane up if you're not familiar with crane operations, get it above the, the section of tree they want to remove, lower the ball down, hook up some slings around the trunk of the tree, and then hook those slings onto the, the um, crane hook. It's quite a process. They, it actually takes a lot of experience to do because you're trying to balance these pieces of wood uh, from a crane once you actually cut it from the trunk of the tree. So it's not something you want, you don't want to have a large, you know, five ton piece of wood spinning around out of control um, in that process. So they did a very good job, um, very good crew there. Um, so essentially they dismantled the tree in large sections um, in the process. Once they made the pick, um, from the tree, they swung it over and laid it down in the Spring Street parking lot, which was closed, um, where the town crew would limit and cut it into large wood sections, log sections. Um, and then the um, Linden Tree Care log loader would load it up. Um, and then at the end of the day, we took everything to um, our storage area. So, you know, what were the main concerns um, with the tree and why it was selected? Its health was one of the, the main reasons why the Mary Maple ended up being selected for removal out of all the other trees on the common. Um, and the declining crown was, you know, the sort of main um, reason. It was an example of the state of the health of the tree um, and how long it would potentially have to, to live, especially if there was disturbance around the root zone. Um, the other issue there was the, the unknown ex extent, um, well, the, the weak branch unions um, that were there, um, and then the decay in the main trunk at those branch unions where it attaches to the main trunk. And then the overextended branches that were, um, were very long um, with a lot of unbalanced sort of leverage at the tips of those branches. And you know, a lot of this, you know, the extended branches, the decay, the weak branch unions, um, well, a lot of that, as I have said in the past, could be mitigated through pruning and other things and cabling and bracing. Um, but there wasn't much I could do about the declining health. Uh, so the, the, the crown was thin. It was notably thin. Um, this picture actually didn't do a very good job of showing how thin the crown was, but you know, 
you shouldn't be able to look up through a crown of a healthy tree like this. It should be much fuller. Um, and then that branch union where there was already some branches that had been removed or had failed. Um, and the, there was obvious decay in, the, in that area. But again, with the trunk, you can't see inside the trunk without some special tools. Um, so really couldn't tell for sure what the extent of decay was. Um, so after we took it down, um, so this is, this is that area that um, I just showed. Um, and if you look at the upper right top arrow, it points to you know, a decay area in the trunk of the tree with some discoloration of the wood where the decay was present. Um, again, it's not outside the allowable limits of decay in a, in a, in a piece of wood that size, um, but it's just an, it shows the extent of decay. Decay likes to go up in a tree, in a wood of a tree, it likes to travel up. The tree has better defenses against decay that travels down um, in a trunk. Um, and the, the arrow on the left points to another example. The middle arrow is pointing to an area where it was just, you know, organic matter and root mass. So the tree was actually sending fine root hairs out into the organic matter that was forming in the middle of this these, this branch union there. Um, and then uh, the other two arrows are pointing to branch, one branch failure and a branch that had been pruned away. So um, this circle indicates a crack that developed after the tree was removed. And in the, in the process of lifting this piece with the crane, um, this is, the leader that we're looking at here is actually the main leader of the tree, the one that was in decline. Um, and a crack actually developed there during the removal process. Doesn't mean it would have failed, but um, it means that there was a weak spot there as well. So what I'm looking at, what we're all looking at here is the bottom, sorry, the top <laughs> of, um, this piece would have sat on top of what, sorry, rephrase this. Let me see if I can back up. This piece here sat on top of this. Um, so if you turn this piece up, so this was facing straight up in the air, the bottom piece was connected to the stump part this part was connected to the part that we were just looking at. And what you're looking at here is a lot of decay um, at that uh, point. I'm sorry, is this a leader or is this the trunk? This is the, the trunk. trunk. Okay. So on the right, the right hand side there, um, you'll see like this flat piece that's kind of funnel yeah. shaped. Um, that was where the main leader came off the tree. Um, the let's see at the very bottom of the trunk um, is you'll see kind of a decay spot discoloration there. Um, that's where the main leader attached to the tree. Um, but the big the takeaway for me here is that this decay went up into um, into those leaders that we were just looking at. <laughs> and there was not a lot of wood there holding them all together. So there was very, you know, very weak um, area. It wasn't, again, it wasn't, hadn't reached that critical um, stage where the decay was so significant that it would be considered a risk tree because it couldn't be mitigated some way because we could mitigate it, but there was a lot of decay there. Um, that's dense organic matter with lots of fine root hairs growing in it. Um, so so um, um, did I interrupt? Uh, um, but 
would it be a good idea for me to share some of these pictures on our social media so that people can see the decay or should I like leave well enough alone? Like yeah. what, what's the opinion of everyone on that? <laughs> so I've, been, I've been tossing that back and forth in my mind, like what's best for the people in their minds. Yeah, so, you know, you you can have, um, you know, 10 arborists look at a picture and they'll probably give you 10, <laughs> 10 different assessments of that picture. Um, and you need to have the whole thing in context. Um, so I guess, you know, this presentation is going to be posted on the town website because um, it's part of your, your, your committee meeting. So you mm -hmm. can reference that. Um, uh, I like having some narrative there, but I think we could share some photos on the town website. That would be fine. Um, yeah, how about um, the picture before this one? If you share yeah. that with a link to um, Alan's presentation on the town website on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. Does that make sense, Alan? It does, yeah. Great. So the picture that we're looking at now, um, again, is, I believe, yep, this is the stump. So this was the last piece of wood that was cut off of, I believe, the, the tree. Um, and the arrow is pointing to um, this discoloration. If you look at the main, wood slab there or wood round, you'll see this kind of light, you know, yellow tan wood. That's sort of healthy wood. The darker wood is wood that's there has been decay. And at the the bottom of the picture where the air is pointing, it's actually, you know, out towards what we, a generic name as sap wood, which is where, you know, that conductive healthy tissue is transporting nutrients up and down. Um, the tree, um, that's punky wood out there. Um, and that's sort of what's referred to as sap wood decay or sap rot. Um, that is not healthy conductive tissue. It's not doing anything anymore. Um, and it's um, an indication of poor health of the tree. So um, the tree is not translocating anymore, either from the leaves or from the roots. Um, you know, back and forth. It's just dead tissue. Um, and that was, this is the side of the tree that kind of fed up to the main leader of the tree, which is um, possibly a good idea why the main leader of the tree was not, you know, was declining faster than the rest of the tree. But um, this was, the tree had lost the ability to compartmentalize the decay in this area and the decay was spreading. So, but again, didn't mean the tree had to be cut down. It was not a risk tree. It just was a, a sign of poor health uh, and declining health. This is another piece of that section there. So the, again, you've got these um, top left-hand corner is, a, is sort of the decay barrier there, the wall. The tree's defense trying to wall off decay as it's spreading into the, the wood of the tree. Um, and you can see that it's slowly spreading out from the center. Um, the bottom right hand corner arrow is showing you where the, this decay is getting closer and closer to the sap wood of the tree. So pretty soon it was going to you know, impact the, the ability of the tree to transport um, water nutrients um, up and down the tree. So, and then the um, middle arrow is just pointing to punky wood that you know looks like carpenter ants, uh, possibly termites have been working in that center of the tree, that leader of the trees. Excuse me, not the not the main trunk. And then further up, there was that large leader that was overextended and headed out towards Spring Street parking lot. You know, the crown was pretty healthy. The leaf, the leaf, um, 
uh, leaf surface was pretty healthy. Uh, what the arrow points to here is the, so the center of that is obviously decay. It's punky, rotted wood or hollow. Um, and the top right hand arrow is just pointing to the amount of sound holding wood we have on that, on that branch at that point in the tree. Um, so that's pretty thin for a branch that size to be supported. And at the bottom right hand or left hand corner, it's pointing to um, a, you know, wound wood that was essentially growing around the crack in the tree. Um, and that's punky wood. Um, it's not sound wood around there. Um, so that was a, a not structurally sound component. So the top portion of this branch cut here um, was under tension because the tree went leader went out and the gravity is pulling it down. So the top wood there was all under tension. Uh, the bottom portion of that, if you cut a, put a line right through the center of that horizontally, the bottom portion of that wood was all under compression um, from the weight of the branch. And um, there was a lot of, a lot going on there structurally. It was not surprising, it really surprised me how weak this branch was and still holding good. It was cabled, so that helped. <laughs> the cable did something, I'm sure, there. Um, so this is that branch there. This is the part that was cut off um, from that branch. And again, you'll see this kind of, you know, rot in the center tree. There's no structural value to that. Um, at the top left, Center of sorry, top center of the picture um, is some of that um, sort of wound wood or tension wood that was uh, um, leaves. This was the top portion. I'm confused now. I apologize. Um, but what I was trying to point out with this arrow was that there's actually a crack <laughs> that goes down and it's kind of funnel shaped. Um, the wood is cracked there. Um, uh, so there's no strength in that portion of the wood. And then at the bottom, um, the bottom arrow is kind of pointing to another crack that was formed. And this is where um, I said there is that brown punky wood at the bottom of the last cut. Let's see. Um, this bottom left arrow. Uh, was the bottom arrow here. So again, there's a crack there that goes almost out to the healthy tissue. So a lot of, lot of um, forces acting on wood that is you know, compromised. Um, and I, without the cable, I would imagine this branch would have failed. Um, when we cut it, when, we, when the um, Linden Tree Care cut that cable, the whole tree moved significantly. So there was, there was portions of the dead top of the tree actually snapped out and fell to the ground um, when they released the tension on that cable. And then up in the upper crown, this picture came out terrible and I, I'm sorry, but there's, there are multiple branches that had a lot of decay in them. Um, and it wasn't until we get them on the ground and cut them that we realized that they were practically hollow. Um, and that, to me, was an indication of some damage that was done a number of years ago. My thought was possibly the October snowstorm that just stressed a lot of trees, created a lot of kind of micro cracks in the wood of the tree. And over time, decay has worked its way through the branch. And we see this in a lot of trees around town. Um, so in just a rough conclusion, um, saprot fungi was actively spreading in the tree. Again, not a non-structural issue, but a health issue of the tree in a state of decline. Um, decay at the, the main trunk branch union, union was extensive, but again, not had reached that critical threshold yet. And um, decay in the overextended branches was more extensive than I had, uh, had been thinking possible there. So um, again, this is the Mary Maple 
uh, the mini Mary Maple that is lit now. And this is from 2014. So um, we'll hopefully continue the Mary Maple um, history going forward. Let me close this out. Actually, Alan, can you just hold up? Uh, I have just for my notes, um, if he's bringing it up, just give me two seconds. I'm just going to get one more point here. Thank you, Ellen. That was very helpful. That but, was very, very informative. And I think that most community members who see this will get a much better understanding. So I appreciate that. Yes, thank you. I've had a couple of people ask me um, if anyone has aged the tree. Uh, um, yes. <laughs> So I have been trying to count rings on the tree since we took it down and it's difficult actually. Um, the rings aren't very obvious, um, but when the word is wet, it's, it becomes, they actually pop out pretty good. Um, so I have to say that the, the estimate that came up days before the tree was scheduled to be removed um, completely blew my guess at the tree being you know, 80, 80 or so years old. Um, it definitely was, you know, like 160 years old or so. So it was one of the earliest Norway maples planted in this country, I would say probably, because a Norway maple um, wasn't really in production in the country until like 1860s, I think. Um, so you really couldn't even get them at a nursery. Um, Bennett, you all set for that? Yeah, I'm sorry, thank you. Okay. And to my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, Norway maples don't normally live that long. Yeah, I mean, that's my, in my experience, definitely with street trees and even park trees, and most, a lot of the Norway maples that we've planted around town in the, in the 70s are aging out now. I mean, we don't have a lot of healthy Norway maples around. Um, and these are trees that aren't on the roadside, they're in parks, you know. Um, but uh, that, you know, it just makes it all more sad, you know, that this old tree had managed, had managed to find its, you know, happy place to grow. It liked growing there. Um, it was doing pretty good for a long time, so. Yeah, and it's really a shame because it means there was 160 some odd years of this discussion not having to happen, which is pretty impressive for a tree that size. <laughs> Unfortunately, it happens to all of us at some point in time. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Shoshana, you still have a hand raised? Um, yeah, I'll take that down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the last thing that I wanted to bring up on the Merry Maple is that um, we have all these memories that have been collected. Um, so Claudia at the Chamber of Commerce, I think, um, said that after so she had the box in which people were submitting their memories um at the event the uh you know pre-removal event and she said that it was so full that she had to remove all of those um papers and store them and then they put it out again at the farmer's market the following weekend or that weekend and then they also put it back out at the lighting of the mini maple um and so I think we as a committee need to decide what the next steps are on that. I would be happy to go and um, kind of s collect the thing, the the submissions and see what we're working with and then maybe, um, you know, propose something to the committee in terms of, you know, whether or not we want to try to display memories or archive them immediately or, you know, kind of open that for a discussion once I see what what we have. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also I mean, that, good... <clears throat> Go ahead, Alan. Sorry. No, I was gonna say we could definitely look at having those scanned electronically, so that and then um, having them, you know, put in the archives at Joan Library or something like that. Um, maybe uh, uh, 
maybe a display at the Jones. You know, they sometimes use that center um, atrium for displays of different organizations or different artwork and uh, might and be a nice place. Keep them in the special collections as well. Yeah. Yeah. I really like the idea of the display in the atrium. That would be um, really fun, I think. And um, we could also share some on social media. Yeah. Um, I would Just like sorry. a special edition of the newsletter devoted only to select letters. I assume that some of them would be really cool. That's yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, Britt could probably use some help with that. Does anyone want to work on that? Or Yeah, I'll help Britt with that project. I can give you a hand. Great. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we can offer, I can offer up some DPW uh, scanning capacity. We could try scanning these so we don't have to keep, you know, deep managing the paper product. Um, right. Great. Thanks. Because it doesn't go on our budget. <laughs> All right, should we get back to the agenda? Um, agenda, there we go. Okay, so uh, Mary Maple is good. Town tree inventory, anything new? Um, uh, the um, Nick, the intern from the summer is uh, probably gonna start back up in January, starting to collect some tree data again. Um, so that'll keep moving forward. I did recently get an updated um, uh, spreadsheet of all the tree points that we collected over the summer. Um, I kind of have to go through those and kind of check them out. Um, There's some missing information um, that we have to add. Um, but uh, yeah, moving forward. The other component of that grant was the master plan, uh, management plan, sorry, for um, the town trees, the tree program. Um, and I've pulled together some um, management plans from other communities that kind of have a nice format that I think we could follow. So I got to start working on that this winter. Okay. Uh, social media update. Yep, I don't have anything additional to report. Um, I put out a little flyer for our last planting that we did. Um, and I think that's it, uh, nothing new. Okay. Yeah, I think I, think I put a thing about um, like kind of personifying the, the new Mary Maple about like encouraging people to come out to support her so that she'd have a good debut and it seemed to work because yeah, a lot of people showed up yeah. and it did get picked up by um, some other groups like Mindy Dom picked it up and I think the Greenfields Tree Committee and maybe Northampton and uh, there's a few people that picked it up so it got some oh yeah and Hilltown families got it too Great. um I posted today about the meeting this meeting, but I'd like you guys to really take that on in a day or two before, or even the same day, but um, that should be something that regularly goes on both our Facebook and our um, Instagram account. You know, meeting uh -huh. tonight, 530 with the link. So can All you guys right. make sure that happens? Yeah. Great. I need to be able to get the link. I don't know why I didn't get like any sort of email link or anything. And usually Angela uh -huh. sent something. Well, I think that um, I deal with this on the newsletter. I think that the link that we get, you're having difficulty finding, and that's a problem for you as a committee member. But the public link is generally always available in the Amherst Town Calendar. So that that one's whenever I write the newsletter, I just go to the Town Calendar and copy paste directly from there. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, true that. All right. All right. Um, the town tree tour. Ellen and I are going to get together next week to uh, start working on the brochure for that. So that is finally in process. Um, second Saturday plantings for next year. Do we have any more to say on that? Um, we should be looking at places like Britt suggested, thinking about social justice areas and getting a list of places to plant and take care of trees. So um, 
let's start doing that in the new year. Yeah. Anything um, else? Just, uh, just one comment about that. Um, uh, there was a time uh, Sarah was um, encouraging us to put together um, our own list of uh, places to plant um, before she stepped down as the chair. And um, I, I did that. Um, and I bet some other people did too. So just as a reminder, I, it's easy for me just to forget stuff like that. But I'll go back somewhere. I have a little map that I've populated with good places to plant trees and I'll figure that out. But um, if, if you already did some work, this is just a reminder that maybe you did it already. You know, you did this already. Okay. So let's let's bring those lists next meeting in January and um, and yeah, come up with a good list. Great, thanks. Uh, the History Museum, anything new, Alan? Um, not nothing new other than the fact that I'm now kind of in a place where I can put time towards it. So I will be um, actively moving forward with uh, planning and getting, putting out to bid the actual work itself, um, the cabling, the lightning protection, and the pruning of the trees. So um, okay. that will start taking place. And is there anything we can do now to help work on that? I think you're all set for now. It's just going to be, I, I'm hoping that in uh, the January, I'll have uh, more contact with the Amos History Museum and, and try to figure out you know, what they want to do as far as some um, public outreach and possible fundraising. So. Okay. Is this in regard to the groom tree out front of the yeah. history? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. And the bride tree will plant at whatever day we do a work day there. Yeah. You know, the second wife, a third wife, whatever it is. <laughs> All right. Um, town budget line item, Bennett, you were going to do something on that? You were going to reach out to one of the. I was, and I didn't. Um, and I will. Thank you. Anything else? I have a quick update on that, which is that um, we have a few uh, different folks who I have informed of our work on the town budget line item, um, different organizations from around town who work within the budget. And they all seemed supportive and willing to advocate for it, including the ECAC and uh, the Amherst Climate Justice Alliance. Good. Um, all right. Old ongoing items. Connections with Stockbridge School. I assume nothing's changed there. I So I emailed um, Dan Cooley at Stockbridge and he basically said, you know, yes, they do things related to trees, but the real tree stuff, you know, focus on the folks in environmental conservation, um, which is not related to Stockbridge. Um, and so I emailed Christina Bizanson, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Um, and she got back to me and she said, um, she said she has Alan in her seminar every year. She said um, she would be happy to advertise meetings and events to her students and um, in the tree program, um, including related to plantings and volunteering opportunities. Um, she said the committee um, or, or you know, me on behalf of the committee could come and speak to her classes if that would be useful. She also suggested that Rick Harper's community forestry class um, in the spring might be an opportunity to connect um, the work of our committee and what's going on at UMass because they, as part of this course, conduct a tree inventory and write a management plan. Um, so those were a few suggestions that she had in mind. So I don't know what we as a committee want to do in terms of our response, but um, that's where that is. Yeah, so um, my response is first, I think any publicity we do toward the plantings and other events would be great. So if we can make sure that she gets notices when we have plantings and things, um, I'd be happy, very happy to speak to her class. Um, I could do with you or myself or sure. whatever. 
So if you want to let her know that. Okay. Um, she can be in touch with me or I can contact her at that point. Why don't you continue the initial contact and then. Okay. That'd be great. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, thank you. Northampton Road, we talked about a little bit. Uh, uh, no I took pictures and put them into the um, that file that's on our Google group page. Okay. Um, not sure. You mean on our Google Drive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Google okay. Drive, the the town Google Drive thing there. Yeah. It's um, called. Look for that. Yeah. Very right, good. Thanks. Library trees. Anything new, Sarah? Well, the construction's not happening at the moment, but. Um, yeah, no, no news on my end. Um, yeah. But we're interested in having someone come and talk to the committee. Is that true? Yeah, I think we, um, my goal was that one of us follows when they're having meetings, especially construction planning meetings and figure out how to save as many trees as possible and how to do protection around the trees that they do keep. Before, okay. before the plans get finalized. So, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that still. Great. Yeah. Are you ready? Let's go upstairs. Right. Website update, Bennett. You're muted. That was a long way to go for you to know, to hear what you already knew, which is I haven't done anything on that. Okay, just checking in. So, good. thank you. Um, complete street state level initiatives. Uh, I haven't done anything since. Julian, have you had anything going on with that? No. Okay. Um, and so, this is one where I'm sorry, on the complete streets, you know, I think that this is the thing that I, uh, many aspects of this, one aspect of it is this is a thing that I wrote. Remember, I wrote up like a two page kind of overview for legis like for like legislative decision making and it was incomplete because we hadn't started the project yet but that is something I don't think we've used that at all it's certainly not final but Sashana when you were talking about taking the pictures I think that one of the things that we were waiting on was to make it more complete was those pictures um, so um, I, I just wanted to remind you that that's that's an asset that's probably like 80 percent done that could be useful. Um, uh, I think we conceived of that as something for like talking to somebody about like Mindy Dom about what, what complete streets sh should be rather than what it is today. Um, so just a, just a reminder that that's an asset in development. Can you yeah. send that out to everybody? Or and after at this point. Yeah. Like before they took down the trees, I took pictures and then after the tr they took down cool. trees, I that's yeah that was a big part of it okay can you send that open it i'd like to see it at least sure yeah okay, that's good uh significant tree ordinance sarah no update um but definitely some literature review stuff to just keep working on i would just like to know that we that I've had at least 20 people come up to me with concerns about trees being removed on various private property locations around town, including a lot of folks in my school. Um, and I explained basically, here's the significant tree ordinance, here's what we're drafting, this is the state of things, and they were understanding, but I think there's a lot of public push we should harness um, in favor of this. Yeah, I would add that I've, I've had the same, not at that number, but, you know, a, a significant handful of, of people, especially related to removals um, on Amherst College property um, off campus. Um, and I'm supposed to be helping out with that. I got sidetracked by all the Mary Maple stuff this month, but but I will, I will be on track. Hey, would a significant tree ordinance have saved the Mary Maple? <laughs> um, one critical piece about the significant tree ordinance that we're definitely lacking so far is public support. That's going to be huge. So if you're having all these conversations and you can get people to 
put their name down somewhere or send you a letter or somehow put into writing. So we have proof, you know, like a paper trail, visible support from the community. Um, and then, you know, however, if you if you want to send it to me and I'll keep a, a file or something and log it. But I if if other people are having a lot of these conversations, that's something we should start to try to harness so that we can just like uh, sign moving forward. Have people sign their names on a sheet of paper and send it to you. Be, I mean, yeah, I mean, with some sort of statement or something, um, okay. uh, you, you know, or or write a quick little email. I support a significant tree ordinance in Amherst or, or something. But uh, we should just start yeah. to kind of catalog these things and use it um, to kind awesome. of come up support since that's going to be critical in getting legislation passed. We could potentially put something in like the Indy or Gazette asking for public support as well. Yeah, yeah I think that's going to be a step a little bit later when we have something a little bit more, more polished to go public with. But if you're having casual conversations and you want to just like give them a, our email and have them send yeah. a letter of support, um, anything that we can start to kind of gather in the, this preliminary stage would be helpful too. That's great. And also you like, can encourage people to write letters to the editor. Yeah. yeah, I feel like a big part of the, for our preparation is gonna be figuring out like what the actual diameter is that we're talking about. Cause I think that's gonna make people, some people will probably bulk at the idea of like not knowing that we're talking about, you know, actual big trees. Cause they don't wanna have like another thing that's like restricting their land use or whatever. But if it's made clear that we're talking about like legitimately significant trees, like we'll have to have like a hard number, I think for that. Yeah. Okay, anything else? All right, last, oh, go ahead. Not on that topic. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead and then we'll go to the solar bylaw group. Well, should I save it for, I didn't know if you were trying to move on to like the end of things or I can save it for committee comments if that is better. No, say it now, why not? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just had, I had three thoughts kind of coming out of the, the whole Mary Maple thing and talking with a lot of members of the community about, about trees. And um, the first is that, I guess it's a question, is there a process for making sure that we as a committee see all of the statements that come in around a particular tree? So in the case of the Mary Maple, I don't know if it's because I wasn't on the committee earlier on, but I had lots of people say, oh, I sent a letter uh, to the committee or I sent a letter to Paul Bachelman. And many of those letters, I, I never heard a single one of those letters referenced in any of these meetings. So I'm wondering if, if they went to Paul Bachelman is there even any process that then gets them to us, right? Like as a committee, it seemed like there weren't a lot of people who were, you know, that concerned about the tree. There were a handful, right? And the, this tree is just an example. Um, but then after the fact, all these people spoke up and said, no, I wrote a letter. I, I, I tried to get in touch, um, but I feel like we didn't we didn't have a full picture of that information. So I'm wondering if there's there's a process by which or a new process that we can implement that makes sure makes sure that um, you know there's some kind of communication between the committees and the town manager. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, so that's my first question or or point so, that I yeah. want to make sure is me, out there. Yeah. To that, um, several of the letters came into the um, tree committee where, um, email at email box at gmail and i responded to all those and they're archived in the in our gmail account okay but they were never mentioned to the committee is that right i usually mention when i heard you know like oh, we got two letters about this yeah um, okay i usually do that um i can also send you relevant ones if you're interested and then some come to me personally and in my right. Chair's report. I always announce what comes into both of those. Okay. Yeah, it's not. I'm, I'm not worried about the Mary Maple at this point, but I, I think making sure going forward that any letters that come in to the committee email or to individual committee members are brought to the attention of the full committee, so that we have a clearer picture of, you know, what the public is 
feeling about a particular tree, right? So if, if, you know, if we know that there are 30 people who across all of us have sent in letters that might change the way the committee is thinking compared to if we think there are two letters that have come in, right? In the so future, I'm not sure if this is possible, but in the future, could we have it, and I would be happy to do this, where if we get any public comments that are explicitly public comments, we forward them to all the committee members. Yeah, I think something like that, that would be great. great. And, and just in, in you know, this conversation that's happening now, it occurs to me, you know, what if we put a, a Google form on the website um, where if people have a comment to make about a specific tree, including a tree hearing, um, then it goes into there. And then that's something that the full committee is is made aware of when a comment comes in. But then of course, also making sure that yes, maybe we forward um, anything that we get as a committee or maybe I, as individuals on the committee for everyone. I checked the committee email at least twice a day and um, would be more than happy to compile any comments we get in advance of a tree hearing via email in a Google doc and share it with all of you. I, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, I always, I always share generally. I always check before the meeting and both mine and the committees and send in what I have. And then some people write to Alan and Paul directly. Right. Alan usually responds and tells us, but Paul, yeah, we don't really know what That's happened. Right. Um, great. Okay. And then the second is that I think, I think we as a committee need to think about our strategy for getting out the word about tree meetings and hearings. And I know that we're already working on that, but if there's a big, a big hearing um, or something that we know is going to be big in the community, maybe thinking about the newspapers, you know, I think, I think, yes, like more public participation can make things challenging from, you know, for the people who are making decisions, but I think it's really necessary. Um, you know, I just heard so many people with the Mary Maple say like, I, I didn't know, I didn't know this was happening. I didn't know that the tree was coming down. I didn't know there had been, you know, however many opportunities to engage on this. And so, you know, in, in some ways, yes, that's, that's on them, but, but if we can do a better job of making sure that we're getting the word out, I think that would be. I mean, at least for me, there was a lot more publicity after we made our decision. Right. Exactly. After the decisions were made than beforehand. And I think I share your frustration that beforehand is the better time to do that. Yes. And then my third point, and I'm sorry, I'm taking up so much time on this. My third point or my third issue that I would, you know, want to raise to the committee is, um, you know, in, in these, these projects, like the, the town common project, um, it feels like the, dis the planning of these projects happens um, without any representation for the trees in the planning phase. And so then what happens is it becomes the project and the trees get pitted against each other. Um, you know, if we don't cut down these trees, then this project doesn't move forward, right? And so I, I know, I'm sure there would be some resistance to this um, from various entities in, in the town government, right? But But is there a way for the committee, whether it's just the tree committee or the tree and climate committee or whatever committees to be more engaged in the planning phases of projects that have a significant impact on our town environment. So I would just raise that perhaps as something we come back to later, you know, but so we don't, we don't end up again with these projects that move forward without any environmental considerations, then being pitted against, you know, it's, it's one or the other because the decisions have already been made or the projects have already been designed. Yeah, these are great ideas. Um, I do wanna say that we've come a long way in that regard and we still have a long way to go. Um, when I first joined the committee, the things were already finalized before anything came to us. And now some of the, the planning board, a lot of those places reach out at least to Alan and we hear about it much sooner, but still it's often too late. So. Um, I'm not sure how to go beyond that, but yeah, that is a, a definitely a goal of us. And why don't we put that on the agenda for a future meeting? I think we could spend a chunk of time on that. Great, thank I'd, you. I'd like to add, can I add something to that too? Yes, of course. Okay. Sure, okay. So I would say that um, we have come a long way um, as far as town projects go and trees 
that impact public shade trees. Um, I am much, I am made aware of these projects, you know, much earlier on in the process now. Um, so if a developer is doing a project, um, they will contact me well in advance usually and say, um, you know, this is what I want to do. These might be the impacts on the trees. You know, what can we do? And, um, you know, can we, do you think we could take down these trees or we could do this over here? And you now I'll often be very frank up front with them because they're at the very beginning stages. And I would say, no, I don't think that can, that can happen. Um, um, you should try to figure out a different way of doing it. And, and depending upon their project, they may or may not do that. Um, as far as town projects go, generally speaking, I am involved at the very beginning and I bring that information to the committee. So with the Mary Maple, you know, we did have like multiple opportunities to look at um, projects that were planned for the North Common. Um, the initial, you know, um, design that was done by the consultant um, the committee had input on and had a ability to say, no, we don't think, you know, you, we want to cut down, you know, all the trees or a lot of trees, there's an opportunity there for the committee to, and the public, because it was a public process. Um, but again, we don't, people don't pay attention to the, the shady committee agenda, um, right. unless they're really concerned. And then, you know, as far as the design that was done now for the common that's moving forward, you know, the trees were, the environment was the driving factor for the design that we ended up with. Um, was how can we preserve the most tree canopy on the common sure. and North Common, and that's what we ended up with. And, um, and I'm not necessarily so. speaking about that project. You know, I think you know what I'm thinking forward to is the all of these side, all of this sidewalk money, right? That's come in and um, pro, you know, pro, pro, future development projects. How can we just make sure that that you know those interests are represented early on? It sounds like yeah, great progress has been made, but but are there ways for us to institutionalize um, that input in earlier phases? Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be, I think that would be good. I agree. Good. No, thank you for those comments. It's great, Britt. Um, all right, yeah, last, last agenda item, and then we can uh, retire. Um, Solar Bylaw Group, do you have anything, Julian? Uh, no updates there. They haven't had a meeting in a little while. Okay. Any other comments by the committee or any public who are not here? No? All right, let's adjourn the meeting then. Thank you all. Um, we'll meet again in January. I uh, wish everyone a healthy, treeful new year. And uh, yeah, we'll be in touch. Thanks, everybody. Thank Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. 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 Mm-hmm.